Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to NTV's weekly chat show, Talking Point. I'm your host, Syed Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a lady who has made more films than you and I have had breakfasts. Ruhi Hamid has made several award-winning documentaries for the BBC, Channel 4, Al Jazeera International, and American and European broadcasting organizations. She is a graduate of Royal College of Art. She specializes in international stories and has produced films across Africa, Asia, South America, and the Middle East. She has made films about various topics like Islam, women, poverty, human rights, health, political, and social issues. Ruhi Hamid, it seems it has been a long journey. Where did it all begin and when? Well, um, my filmmaking journey started quite late in my life, actually. Um, I started out uh, going to art school uh, to study graphic design. Right. Um, and it was while I was at the Royal College of Art that uh, in the second year we got an opportunity to go into a different discipline. Right. And I chose to go into the audiovisual discipline. Mm -hmm. And there I um, made a short three minute film about South Africa's mine workers. This mm -hmm. was during the apartheid era. Right. And when I made that, I, was, I really got a taste for filmmaking, and I loved the fact that you could tell... Did you travel to South Africa for that? No, no, I did it all with using imagery, that right. existing imagery. Right. And uh, so it gave me a taste for filmmaking. But then I continued to work as a graphic designer for a number of years, eventually deciding I really did want to make documentaries. Mm -hmm. So I um, came back to the UK after working in Holland and Zimbabwe as a graphic designer and got a job at the BBC. Right. and use the BBC as a training ground mm -hmm. uh, and I learned my craft really working at the BBC first as a graphic designer in moving image on television graphics right. I then switched into the production um, on these very interesting trainee schemes they used to have right. where they try to get people to cross fertilize between departments mm -hmm. and that's how I started as an assistant producer mm -hmm. in um, the BBC's community programs unit right. what was your or rather which was your first film Wow, my first film was called More Sex Please, We're British. <laughs> and, um, was it shown after the watershed time? <laughs> uh, yes, it was, yes. And that film really was um, giving, um, facilitating uh, a member of the public who had very strong opinions about mm -hmm. the fact that pornography shouldn't be legislated by government, but it should be an adult choice. Right. So we explored, well, what did that mean? Right. So really, even though the title was quite provocative, yeah. it was actually exploring what Britain's attitudes were towards something like pornography. Right. Uh, what were the response uh, from the viewers, the audience? It was very, very good, actually. People found it very interesting, very enlightening. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is that it made people think again whether they wanted government to make mm -hmm. strict legislation about what adults could and could not view. Um, and so, um, in the end, I think a lot of people realized that as long as you're not exploiting young children or right. animals, right. yes, pornography is something that should be up to adults to choose whether they watch it or not. Uh, to watch or not to watch. But uh, you have made films which are all watchable <laughs> and must watch. Uh, like The Traffickers, like uh, The Unreported World, but Mexico Baby's Business to See. Can you give me an idea of this, just these two, because this is the, this is relates to human adoption, the dark side of human adoption, yeah. children, and also the baby business of Mexico, the surrogacy. And one was produced for Channel 4, the other was for uh, a fusion, it's U a US channel, is it? Yes, it's uh, an online broadcaster, a little bit like Vice. Right, see. So, what were the motivations for this? It's really interesting that you picked the two because there is something similar. It was 
just sort of coincidental mm -hmm. that I did the two films one after the other. Um, I initially did The Unreported World about the surrogacy. Um, and this was all about, uh, again, these are ethical questions. Both the films raised very basic ethical questions about whether you can turn babies or children into products. Right. So in the surrogacy film, it was about uh, a lot of um, couples in the West, or um, particularly in North America, um, who couldn't have children of their own. And so what they do is they hire a womb mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. a poorer Mexican woman, yes. which brought up lots and lots of ethical um, you know, dilemmas around that. Um, and what you find is that invariably the women in the developing world country is, are being exploited. So, um, the, and the people behind it who were doing the exploiting was actually the agencies, the middlemen. Because actually, you know, the couples who couldn't have children, you, you're yeah, sympathize, we'll go to any length, yes. yes, you sympathize with them because they want to have a family. They've tried and tried to have a child, they can't. But they want to complete a family. So then there's the whole issue of, well, you can get somebody to carry the child for you. But it was the agencies who were doing the exploiting. They were charging the couples a lot of money, right. promising them all sorts of things, and then getting the women in Mexico and promising the couples that, oh, we will treat them really well. But quite often, they didn't look after these women and they weren't getting paid a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the characters in our film, she had been um, implanted with an embryo that was from a man who was HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So it put this lady in great danger True. of the potential of catching and contracting HIV AIDS herself. Yes. And they never informed her about it. And this is just unethical. So we looked at the whole ethics around um, right. uh, surrogacy. And in the um, dark side of adoption, again, we were looking at the demand created for babies and children through international adoption. America is one of the biggest markets for adopting from outside right. Right. and um, they, they were adopting children from the Congo this was the latest hotspot mm -hmm. of where you go and find children DRC DRC the Democratic Republic of Congo and if you look at the way the international adoption agencies work they invariably target post-war societies where there's chaos mm -hmm. and there has been a lot of death so there are children who have been orphaned um, but what happens is that in that moment of chaos, children get separated from their parents. So they may end up in an orphanage, but actually it doesn't mean that they really are parentless. Mm -hmm. And also in Africa, there is a tradition of the extended family who takes care of the child. So mm -hmm. in reality, in their culture, there is no such thing as an orphan. Right. But the adoption agencies in the West, they think, oh, well, here we go. We've got children who haven't got any parents. They sell this story to the people in the West that you can make a big difference, you can save a child. And again, there is this kind of very paternalistic Western attitude towards the children in Africa. Yeah. You will be saving an African child. But what they fail to you do... See the, you see that quite often on your television screens. Absolutely, yeah. And what they um, forget is that these children have got families and they don't do their kind of um, hard work really to find out whether this child is actually you know someone who is um, uh, appropriate for adoption or not and also what happens is if you cr create a demand for children you need a supply it's a classic thing you have a demand you need a supply there aren't enough children so what do you do you get corruption happening mm -hmm. especially if it's in a poor country Everyone is ready to make a quick bit of money. And so what happens is children were being kidnapped. They were being taken falsely from their parents with the promise that this child is going to go to the West to study and then they'll come back to you. Well, of course, what they don't realize is adoption means adoption, which means yeah. the child belongs to another family forever and they would have no legal rights over these children. Right. We found some shocking stories. Could you put a figure like uh, in, in terms of money, how, how big business is this across the world? Well, one adoption in America can cost up to $80,000. And I can assure you that those people, the small people in Africa who are facilitating, which is the child finders, you get people who are child finders, 
um, the adoption agency, uh, I mean, sorry, the orphanages. Okay, who so, uh, Rui, we have to take a commercial break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll continue with this discussion. Thank you for being with us. So we need to have this commercial break and we'll be back soon. Don't go away.